I want to start this video off by letting Roller Coaster Tycoon's sounds speak for itself. For some of you watching, what you just heard was complete nonsense or random sound bites. But to others, a blast from the past. And yes, I'm nostalgia baiting. Back when a man could go door to door selling used napkins to support his entire large family and buy a house for the bootstraps he held himself up by, you know, the 90s, a man by the name of Chris Sawyer developed a game called Roller Coaster Tycoon and single handedly crafted many core memories for the youth of the time. I vividly remember in the mid-2000s, anxiously biting my nails and tapping my legs, waiting for the moment the bus from school pulled up to my house, so I could sprint straight to the computer to boot this game up. Back in the days when Walmart would have playable demos on TVs that rested in suspiciously flimsy mounts that pointed in a neck-breaking angle, you'd often find a PC section, not unlike today's, but with noticeably more soul. When you push past all the weird point and click puzzle games made especially for divorced moms, you'd find things like Diablo and Half-Life, and even further behind or under all of that sat Roller Coaster Tycoon. I believe at the time it was either fairly cheap or on sale, so since we were broke, my dad decided this would hold me over for a while, and boy was he right. Roller Coaster Tycoon sets you in the shoes of a theme park designer slash constructor. You're given a blank piece of land or a failing park with a few attractions, and tasked with objectives usually consisting of having X number of guests by the year Y with a happiness rating of Z. Sounds simple enough, but you'd be surprised how delicately some of the parks are balanced. You absolutely can fail if you're not paying attention, underestimating how expensive a certain coaster would cost to build, or not hiring enough janitors to clean up the puke and body parts left behind by your more intense rides. Don't let the objectives discourage you, because the magic of this game is the journey, not the destination. I love games that let you start with nothing and turn it into an overwhelming display of creativity. It wasn't an accident that some of my first videos were Dwarf Fortress and City Skylines. City Skylines definitely channels some of what's found here. Designing the roller coasters definitely gave me vibes of designing highways and roadways. Backpedaling a bit, the objectives in Roller Coaster Tycoon are merely a barrier to entry to get you into the more interesting maps, and the classic edition of the game combines one and two to create a pool of like 90 maps or so. Which is fine, you want to give players something to work for. Standard game design stuff, you know? One map that stands out to me is Forest Frontiers, the very first map you get. I think this is the absolute perfect first map. Enough trees and a shape to give it character, but enough easy to work with surface area that you can almost feel it staring back at you. Essentially, a blank canvas spread out before you, ready to be painted. I suggest everyone start here, and even veterans to check it out from time to time. I've done about half the maps on a previous account back in the day, and none of them felt as natural as the first. If you ever find a park lacking in space or just need those extra few tiles, the game makes it simple to expand your perimeter by purchasing tiles. So again, the game makes each map dynamic in a way. After you pick your map, typically you want to start small. Build an income foundation by plopping down a few of the basic attractions. You know, the twister, the pirate ship, the merry-go-round. Then crank the cost of them up a few notches and get that sweet green flowing. There's also a variation of parks that rely solely on the admission price of the park instead of the cost per individual ride. The economy in Roller Coaster Tycoon can be a bit finicky at times, especially since it's hard to gauge what the prices of rides or your park should be. But the basic strategy is listening to your guests. If they're constantly saying something is a good value, it means you need to raise your prices. But if they won't enter a ride or complain about how expensive something is, go ahead and roll it back a bit. Before we move on to the coaster construction, it's important to make sure your staff is up to par. Typically, one security guard and one entertainer is really all you need. I'm honestly not quite sure what they do, or if they actually make a difference. However, the two guys who can make or break your park are the janitors and the mechanics. The janitors serve a surprisingly important role, cleaning up the vomit and taking out the trash. You will always need more of these guys than you think. 
My tactic that seems to work is every time you see a stray pile of goop and you've made sure that there are bathrooms nearby, go ahead and just hire a new janitor and rub his nose in it. I always end up with a ton of janitors, but they're worth every penny. The mechanics on the other hand, make sure the janitors stay in business by keeping your rides and coasters up to snuff. Rides have a timer, and if a mechanic doesn't check them out by the end of it, then the ride has a chance to break. This has a couple bad results, such as an income source being taken away until the repairs are made. Mechanics are a bit more expensive, but kind of with the janitors, I'm a bit reactionary in my hiring practices. If a ride breaks, I simply just hire another mechanic. So long as your coasters are pulling in enough profit, usually the cost of a large workforce isn't that impactful. Profit is something you need to learn to manage early, and not to make a fun game sound boring, but there is a certain amount of spreadsheet simulation going on. It's mandatory to check your balance sheet before you start a big project, because building a coaster is an investment. You need to have the money up front in order to see crazy returns later. This snowballs into progressively larger and more profitable coasters. Last quick thing, go ahead and set your research to the fastest speed possible and select the attractions you want to be researched. This will ensure the crazier stuff gets unlocked by the time limit if you don't plan on playing a map past the objective date. Alright, on to coaster construction. Arguably, the bread and butter of this game, and an easy way to turn an insane profit or be drowning in loans and losses. This part of the game is exceptional, allowing you total freedom to create a coaster of your dream. A giant wooden monstrosity? Check. A twisted and complicated steel construction? Check. A machine designed to kill whoever gets in it and whoever the remains land on? Check and check. A couple quick suggestions. As previously mentioned, you need to have a big bank account. Don't start a coaster if your last couple months ended in the red. Next up, make sure you have plenty of space. The scale of this game is a little goofy. It's kind of hard to tell how big something is, especially if you haven't finished building it yet. For example, look at some of the prefab's real estate usage. If you don't have enough space for those, then odds are you're gonna get frustrated designing your own. And last quick tip, make sure you start with the end in mind. Do not block your boarding station, as you have to remember, guests need to be queued up and allowed to exit. I can't express how many times I finish what I think is gonna be a money maker, only to realize I completely blocked the entranceway, and now I get to spend an hour trying to fix it and snake in an entrance and exit line, ultimately killing the creative high I was riding. The mechanics of coaster construction are very easy to manage, However, the camera and lack of shadows definitely mess with my depth perception. I was gonna go on a long tangent about how beautiful the pixel art managed to be, and I truly believe that to be the case. But I don't know if it's cause I'm older now, but differentiating one object from another gets my eyes kinda strained in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Especially the mouse. In more complicated parks, it would be nice to have an option to have some sort of mouse that was easier to keep track of. Maybe a mouse with a sort of see-through background on it or something? I don't have a lot of negative things to say. As you can see, that last point was just nitpicking. But there are two other things that need to be brought up, and both of those are with the camera. I think it's a sin not being able to control the camera with WASD and rotate the camera with Q and E. I checked the settings and couldn't find a way to rebind the camera, so a huge opportunity was lost there. The main methods the game wants you to do to slide the camera around is with the arrow keys, putting your mouse on the edge of the screen, or holding the right mouse button and dragging. These are all well and good, but combining them just seems nonsensical. Often when dragging the mouse, I'd release the button just to go a hair too far and hit my mouse against the edge of the screen, sending me somewhere else, if not straight up discombobulating me. Another sin was putting all the interactable UI elements up against the edge of the screen, which, need I remind you, controls the camera. It's so annoying to have to constantly reset your camera over and over again when doing stuff like decorating, where you have to interact with the menus a lot. I played the mobile version a bit, and the controls and gameplay work just fine on handhelds. Also, to the game's credit, it loads in a heartbeat. Sometimes if you blink, you can miss the loading screen, which is great, and the game takes almost no space at all. There you go, compliment sandwich complete. Whether you're a veteran of this game like myself, or someone who's never even heard of the game, I urge you to check it out. 
For six bucks, it's hard to go wrong. I really enjoy games that open themselves up to you and don't ask too much, while providing loads of value. If you're looking for a game that has no microtransactions, chill vibes, and a ton of replay value, then this is it. Or just build yourself a death machine, that's valid too. There's a reason people are still singing its praises 25 years later, and I'm one of them. Have a good time, make lots of money, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>